How great. And please introduce yourselves in the chat. <laughs> we have a lot of a lot of new participants this go around. So a lot of new faces. All right, should we go ahead and get started, Catherine? Sure. Hi, good morning, everyone. We're so glad to see you. I'm delighted to spend part of my day with you all. Um, I'm Catherine Diaz, and I work at the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry, OMSI, in Portland, and I'm a new 10 board member. I'll be guiding us through today's uh, event um, and look forward to seeing what you have available this year and beyond. Um, so now Debbie is Debbie Donahue is going to talk a little bit about ten um, and uh, introduce new board members. Debbie, thanks. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for attending the TEN ILE Virtual Traveling Exhibitions Forum. Kelly, could you go to the next slide, please? I would love to introduce the TEN board. We are a all volunteer board and um, present is Heather Farnworth from Ontario Science Center, AJ from Lucy Creative, Cynthia Brown from Museum EXP, myself from Imagine Exhibitions, Sarah Myers from the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, Shane McConnell from Little Ray's Nature Center, Tiffany Wilkinson from Ontario Science Center, Joni Vandenberg Philip from Flying Fish, Catherine, who you've met from OMSI, Felicity Sylvester from Natural History Museum of London, Kelly Fernandi from Minotaur Mazes, and Heather Birchall from the Virtual Science Center. As I mentioned, we are all volunteer based. Um, if you are not getting any emails and would like to be on our email listserv, you can just email me. I'll put my email in the chat. Um, we offer events and networking such as this for our community. We're happy to have this virtual um, event and we would love any feedback as well about other ways that we can support the community. So thank you everybody to um, on the board for all of your work uh, for this great event for the community. And then I'd like to hand it over to our co-host, Mac West from ILE. Thank you, Debbie. It's uh... Pleasure to, to be together with TEN again, <clears throat> and I'm uh, able to uh, talk about the traveling exhibits world from a different perspective of that of, a, of an independent consultant. And I uh, thought I did just a couple sentence of history. The uh, traveling exhibits network or traveling exhibits database that, uh, that we have online is something that started back in the days when I was a museum director which was, well, slightly after the Ice Age. And we were wondering at that time just how we would find out about traveling exhibits. We'd see them or we hear about them and there was no way of getting the information. So we started our traveling exhibits database, TMN, TN came along and uh, there now are a variety of ways in which we can get information. Uh, so it's uh, it's been a delightful evolution that we've seen over the last several decades of how how we have been part of a much larger growth pattern in the traveling exhibitions world. So uh, just the uh, and, and by the way, uh, 
the uh, uh, informal learning experiences these days is Colby Mercy plus me. And uh, Colby is the one who knows how our computers work. <laughs> So are we, uh, Catherine, are you, uh, is somebody going to be talking about the polls now? No, I think we'll do a poll after you talk about uh, what's ahead in the traveling exhibits world. So Kelly, maybe next slide. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, I'm putting together a quick presentation here from the perspective of a person who is not in an institution nor am I in the traveling exhibitions production world, but I have a chance to look at what is going on with this industry right now. And it's this is actually a pretty fascinating time for all of us, uh, as you know, that uh, we're, we survived the pandemic, or it's almost over maybe. And it came at a time, that pandemic came at a time when a lot was going on in the bigger world, which I list a little bit there that uh, each of our organizations can look outside and we can see things happening in our community, in our larger world. Next, please. And then as we look at these, we're saying, okay, let's look at challenges that are, are coming around us as opportunities that we have now new ways of doing things, new potential audiences, uh, certainly new topics that we can be dealing with. So I say, let's, let's look at uh, the chances for reviving and becoming larger, expanding in the 2020s. Uh, but we have to, as we'll see in the, the next slides, we'll, we'll have to be aware of what's going on out there. Next, please. In a, in a new way. Uh, and I kind of look at, okay, what, what are we talking about in the museum world and the traveling exhibits world about trends that, that we're seeing happen? And this is a quick list of uh, doing, doing programs, doing topics that uh, are current, that are taking advantage of and making good use of technology knowing that the world out there that we're dealing with is becoming considerably more diverse and that uh, we, we need to be contemporaneous. Uh, I find it uh, very interesting to walk into some museums and I know darn well that that exhibit got put up 30 years ago and it really is, is something that uh, is a lesson that uh, contemporane con contemporaneity is a critical part of the modern world. And then relative importance for whoever we're talking with. Next, please. So we are constantly doing assessments. What, what is going on as a result of what happened in the past right now? And how are we trying to assess what the future will hold? And what we do for this, and uh, look at this in a minute, is we, we look at data gathering. What, what kinds of numerical quantitative information do we have to work from? Who out there is doing models that we can learn from? And you see a model and you can learn, uh, as the last line there says, you can learn from successful ones and you can also learn from those that were not successful. And often uh, seeing a failure is an excellent point for making decisions and looking into the future. Next, please. And then I'm a, as I describe myself, a lapsed paleontologist, uh, and I constantly am using the model of biological evolution to look at the museum world. And, and it, it is based on these three criteria, environments that museums live in, like those that are lived in by organisms, are always changing. And that there is variability in the environments. They're not fixed and static. And you have to be successful locally in order to be successful overall. And part of being success is being timely and, and uh, uh, relevant right now. So if you take advantage of the uh, uh, opportunities of the changing world, you're going to do well. If you don't, 
as an organism, you can go extinct. And we're probably seeing or, uh, institutions that have had that particular problem. Next, please. So let's look at uh, the world as, as uh, that of a, a phylogenetic tree. And this is a way of saying, okay, museums have evolved, they have diversified. We've got many more kinds of museums now than we, we had in the past. And in fact, there's a, in that 2010, Alan Friedman wrote a very interesting article that included a family tree of the science museum world that uh, you might want to refer to. Next, please. But then part of that world, uh, we can look at uh, 66 million years ago as an analogy when that asteroid hit the earth and the dinosaurs disappeared. Well, what did the pandemic do when it hit the earth and who are the dinosaurs? And then on the right-hand side there, who are the extinct animals, the museums, the organizations that have not survived the pandemic? Next, please. And then we have to uh, say, okay, what, what kind of resources do we have to work with today that are readily available? And I'm not gonna go, th go through this whole list, but uh, there's a, a lot of things going on out there. And because of the way the social media are conveying information, sometimes correctly and sometimes incorrectly. Uh, we have opportunities of bringing new materials into our decision-making process. Next, please. And some, sometimes, next, please. Sometimes this winds up with, well, let's call it, this is named the Museum of the Future. It's in Abu Dhabi. And uh, sometimes things that come out of our decision-making process can be well, let's say peculiar. Next, please. The important thing is the amount of resources that we have to deal with now. And I, I show you two books that I've read recently that uh, were very, very interesting ways of looking, uh, the left one uh, about museums, the right, the middle one about the natural world. And as I was reading through that, the, the comparisons with our museum world became clearer and clearer. And then uh, data. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, Colleen Dillon Schneider's Know Your Own Bone, who comes out with data on a, on a very, very frequent basis and uh, often can learn something from what, what she has gathered for us. Next, please. And then there are <clears throat> various kinds of publications that, that come out from, from AAM and from other organizations. And I, I'm a, a fan of Beth Merritt's Trends Watch, and it's another place where we're getting information that can help us make decisions. So I'll, I'll quit at that point. I thank you, thank you for this. I'm delighted that ILE is a part of today's uh, sessions, but let's look to the future and hope that everything will come out well for all of us. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Mac. Um, I'm Cynthia Brown, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Traveling Exhibit Network. Um, I just wanna quick launch a, a really brief poll to see who's in attendance today. Um, when we were looking at the registration numbers, it looked like it was mostly venues, but I'm just gonna quickly launch this. Um, there's two questions. Uh, one, how do you categorize yourself and if you're planning on attending AAM 2023 in Denver? Um, for those of you who haven't uh, kept up on the emails, registration is now open for, um, for the, uh, the annual conference. It is May 19th through the 22nd in Denver. Um, I don't know about holding over any of that, that snow uh, <laughs> for us there, Jeff, um, but uh, I, I am looking forward to going to Denver. Um, we're currently planning all of our programming for that conference. Um, the formatting is going to be a little bit different this year um, as AAM is pivoting a little bit. Um, so we want to make sure that the, the time and effort that we do put into programming is most helpful to our industry. So, um, <clears throat> all right, share results here. Well, let me, let me jump in and say that as a, a resident of Denver who's been looking out his windows as we, we have this meeting, we're only in the city, we're only at six inches and we've got another four or five to go tonight. Nice. Well, hopefully it all melts by May. <laughs> um, all right. So um, 
we have 118 people who participated right now. We're at 28% venues, 26% exhibition providers, 32% um, are both um, venue and exhibition providers, and 14% are other, um, so industry vendors, et cetera. Um, that is great. Um, I do just want to quickly mention that all of these um, presentations and resources will be made available on our YouTube page, and we'll share out those links um, after, after this call. Um, so you can go back and reference um, both the presentations and the, the PowerPoints, and um, you'll have all the contact information of all the, event, um, all the presenters as well. So um, as far as AAM goes, uh, awesome. Uh, we have 63 people are already planning on going. 31% um, are, un, or sorry, 31 people are undecided, so 26%, and 20%, um, 20 24 folks are saying no. Um, I would love to know, uh, for those of you that are either no or undecided, what your, um, your factors are in that. And if you can just share out in the chat, um, that would be super helpful. And if, um, if you have any thoughts on events that we've hosted previously, um, either at AAM or Aztec or any of the formats that we've used for breakfast, or um, we've tried various activities over the years, we would love your feedback um, about what's been helpful and what hasn't been. So uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna hand this over to Kelly. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, I'm, I'm Kelly with Minotaur Mazes and I'll dive right into our latest buzz. Visitors to our amazing pollinators will be treated to four new experience galleries this year, a pollinator theater, Seek and Find Community Science Challenge, a Garden Gaze Up Gallery, and a How to Help Arena, plus a tutorial to download and identify species with the Seek app by iNaturalist. Amazing Pollinators fills 3,500 to 7,000 square feet and is next available fall 2024. For our next piece of nutritious eye candy, Mazes and Brain Games is, fully, is finally coming to smaller galleries. Stretch your mind muscles in as little as 3,000 square feet starting in spring 2024. And for the complete sensory smorgasbord, our full-size exhibition filling 5,000 to 10,000 square feet has opening starting summer 2024. As Mac pointed out, it's increasingly valuable to feature exhibits that are locally relevant. Recent hosts have greatly appreciated our ability to customize content. For Pacific Science Center, we created 20 custom panels featuring Northwest waterways, species, and local scientists in Water's Extreme Journey. Mission Safari and Mission Botanica hosts love fe featuring prominent plants and animals from their collections, and space and flight museums can handpick relevant aircraft in Mission Aerospace. We have near-term openings in 2023 for some of our popular exhibits, including Amazing Butterflies, Dinosaur Revolution, and Rainforest Adventure. Most of our exhibits rent for $50,000 or less for three months. And once you experience one of them, you'll understand why we have such a loyal following of repeat hosts. We look forward to counting you among them. Thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Great. Tough act to follow. Uh, hey, everyone, it's, it's great to see you all again. Thank you again, Mac and Colby and the 10 board for hosting this event again. For those who don't know me, I'm Troy Rainville with Imagine Exhibitions. Next slide, please. The first exhibition I'd like to highlight is another new exhibition in North America produced by our great partners at SciTech called Explore Your World. Throughout Explore Your World, visitors will be captivated by the quest to explore cities, oceans, and the night sky and develop their mapping skills. Explore how different modes of transport have shaped society through 22 hands-on exhibits, uh, available spring 24 and beyond. Next slide, please. We're currently developing some new exhibitions, so stay tuned for new interactive Lego-based uh, exhibitions by artist Sean Kenny in 2023. Next slide, please. Dinosaur exhibits are proven to drive attendance, and Imagine's dinosaur exhibitions will not disappoint. We offer three indoor dinosaur exhibitions in addition to our outdoor. Dinosaurs in Motion, where art and science meet, visitors will learn about art, science, and innovation 
through 14 life-size, fully interactive, recycled metal dinosaur sculptures with exposed mechanics, a truly unique offering that appeals to all age groups. Dinosaur Explorer, our newest and one of the coolest, created in collaboration with world-renowned dinosaur paleontologist, Professor Gregory Erickson. Dinosaur Explorers, Explorer makes the science behind how dinosaurs survived and thrived relatable to audiences of all ages through exciting hands-on educational content and includes 20 animatronic dinosaurs full of great interactives. And Ice Dinosaurs is a brand new exhibit currently in development, which will display newly discovered Arctic dwelling dinosaurs built around groundbreaking discoveries that are challenging the traditional understanding of paleontology. Visitors will learn about the unique adaptations of polar dinosaurs and understand these extremely challenging working and living conditions in northern Alaska. This is available starting in 2024, and we're currently seeking a third venue to kick off the tour. Next slide, please. Contact me, Angela Henry, or Debbie Donahue, who are all in this call, uh, to learn how we can help drive visitation and provide new and exciting educational experiences for your visitors. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, it's Felicity Sylvester with the Natural History Museum in London. Uh, first off, Wildlife Photographer of the Year. This is a global annual competition and exhibition that's currently touring. Um, the 58th exhibition at the moment uh, shows nature at its most spectacular, surprising and confronting. It's a great opportunity to see nature up close um, from images taken all around the, the globe. The 100 images in this show are the very best of nature photography um, and come from five, over 50 or around 50,000 entries per year and around 90 countries every year. The exhibition is currently in Toronto, Victoria in Canada and in Detroit and will be in Lubbock in Texas this summer if you, as well if you want to get a feel of what it looks like. I'd love to talk to you about this. Um, the 60th exhibition is coming up in winter 2024 and there's nothing like an anniversary as a good reason to join us on the world tour if you'd like to like um if this exhibition grabs your curiosity next slide please our broken planet um how we got here and ways to fix it was a free display in london um between 2021 and 2022 it explored how humans have transformed the natural world and the actions we can take together to repair the damage to our planet Visitors are offered a, a, sect, a set of choices and actions to take. This is now going to be produced as a digital display. I uh, won't have any specimens or, um, or panels or set works. There's three zones and 40 stories, and we've got um, audio and online programming ideas around that as well. This exhibition had over a million visitors between 2021 and 2022. Uh, it was a finalist in the 2022 UN uh, Sustainable Development Goal Action Awards in the INSPIRE category. So the museum is uh, really proud of it and we'd love to share it with you. Um, please uh, stay tuned for more on this one. Hopefully I'm not running out of time. Please may I have the next slide. Thank you. Um, Jurassic Oceans uh, did incredibly well at, uh, um, during its run at the Field Museum last year. Um, it's full of awesome fossils, cars, models, and interactives. It's turnkey, it's in uh, English and Spanish, and we're touring it by road in the US. Uh, it's a really cool exhibition. We've got a great video of a walkthrough. If you'd like to take a look at that, please let me know. And um, we've got a bit of last minute, last minute ex uh, exhibition availability for this year and next. Um, and it'd be great to hear from you. Last slide, please. Um, Fantastic Beast has just finished at the Royal Ontario Museum in Canada. Um, with um, over, over 170,000 visitors um, over the six and a half months. So really, really happy for them. Um, it's a beautiful exhibition, includes props from the Fantastic Beasts and Harry Potter films and natural world specimens to prove that the natural world is just as beautiful and surprising and magical as the wizarding world. Thanks very much. Looking forward to being in touch with you all. Hi everyone, I'm Monica Ramsey, VP of Experience Development and Family Learning at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, and I am really pleased today to be talking with you about what we have to offer, which is traveling exhibitions and uh, some other really exciting things too. So uh, please do go to our website um, link here and uh, sign up for information and newsletters beyond uh, just the information we shared today. Next slide, please. 
So uh, Barbie, You Can Be Anything is um, one of my favorite uh, exhibits that we've been able to produce in the last few years and put on the road. Um, of course, Barbie is, is ubiquitous with um, lots of pretend play and um, it has been around, Barbie has been around for so many decades, but what's really unique about this particular show is all of the stories of real women um, that uh, your visitors will encounter. Um, so you can see examples here of uh, Catherine Johnson. We have Lori Hernandez. We have archaeologists. We have beekeepers. We have such a wonderful variety of um, professionals who um, have broken barriers in their careers and really inspire girls to think about the possibilities of what they can do. So I really encourage you to take a look at the virtual tour link that you'll find in um, the materials you're provided after. That virtual tour is um, uh, was taken during the pandemic, so we have even more interactives out now. Um, our Facebook Live walkthrough was with our exhibit developer, M Melissa Peterson, and uh, we're just really excited to be able to have those materials for you to uh, step foot virtually into this exhibit and think about bringing it to your ex, uh, your institution. Um, it is available starting in fall of 23. Next slide. Uh, another new exhibit we have getting ready to go on tour, Scooby-Doo Mansion Mayhem. Um, I can't tell you the delight that we see on every generation of um, uh, family members who come in and we um, are doing really well with that tour. It is almost gone. So make sure that you are um, reaching out about that. Next slide. We're at time, Monica. I know my watch okay. came up and felt like it was 30 <laughs> seconds. So we have tour availability. Next slide. Make sure you're looking at some um, additional slots that we have available. Exhibit components for sale. Final slide is all of your contact information. Clearly, I'm out of practice with this too. Thank you so much, everybody. Hi, I'm Joni Phillip with um, Flying Fish Exhibits. I'm the Director of Museum Partnerships and Exhibitions. And I wanna chat about four new exciting, brand new exhibitions that will debut in summer 23 and in 24. Next slide, please. The first one I wanted to point out is Ocean Experience. Um, this will be debuting summer 23 ocean experience uses innovative storytelling and cinematography to bring important discoveries about ocean environments and their habitats inhabitants back to the shores and to raise awareness for the oceans and create a community engaged with protecting them visitors will step on board the ocean x is one of a kind research vessel and go through mission-based activities to help inspire lifelong learners key experiences are mission control wet and dry labs Hollow Lab, dive center, deep sea ve vehicles. There'll be a unique immersive 360 degree theater. Um, they'll pilot remote operated um, vehicles and there's opportunities for collaborations with local scientists and artists. This exhibition is modeled on the National Geographic um, Ocean Explorers um, docu-series that will premiere uh, late uh, fall 23. Um, the size is eight to 10,000 square feet. Um, the next, next slide, next um, exhibition is Julia Child, A Recipe for Life. Um, this one is a hot one, guys. Um, Julia touches a lot of different people. She was an amazing disruptor. Um, this exhibition follows her personal evolution in America's culinary revolution. The exhibition explores the key ingredients that made Julia Child the powerful and iconic woman that she was. She changed our ideas about food, women, and what it meant to live a good life. This is her story told in a very unique way that has never been done before. This exhibition is three to 5,000 square feet. Next exhibition, next slide. Thanks, Johnny, we're at time. Okay, well, if everybody, if you check out our slides, there's links to all these exhibits um, on our website. Thank you very much. Morning, everyone. I'm Heather from Virtual Science Center. What does it feel like to be transported from reality like this young girl here? She's just encountered a bunny rabbit hopping around on the virtual tabletop in front of her. Birds and butterflies hover nearby. And when she turns around, wild creatures appear in the animated landscape. 
This guest is trying one of the exhibits in Reinventing Reality, Explore the Science of Virtual Reality, our 5,000 square foot traveling exhibition, which explores how and why it is that as far as your brain is concerned, there's no difference between experiencing something in a VR headset and encountering it in the real world. Next slide. This slide shows guests dancing around in front of a depth camera. A digital model of their bodies is then projected through an app into augmented reality, Pokemon Go style. In the bottom right, one guest is learning about virtual sounds and is excited because she's just the, determined the location of instruments coming from, di from different directions and started up a lively quartet. Next slide. Here, one guest is exploring an underwater environment and watching luminous jellyfish respond to her every move. Another is startled after experiencing what feels like their real arm, though it's actually their virtual arm, being stretched to an impossible length. Next slide. Here you can see um, our, one, some of our virtual experience pods. Here's your chance to fling angry birds at the green pigs, dance to retro beats, or paint in space. Reinventing reality also dives into the potential of immersive technologies and how VR is hastening an entirely new era of communication. Next slide. Finally, here's all the information you need to know about the show. In two weeks' time, Reinventing Reality will be open at its fourth venue, Buffalo Museum of Science. So if you have a cozy coat, then please do go and see it there. And please get in touch with me for any tour, tour slots if you have availability from summer 2023 onwards. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tiffany Wilkinson with the Ontario Science Centre here in Toronto, Canada. We're thrilled to have you join us this morning. Thank you to the 10 board and to Mac West for bringing us all together this time of the new year. I'm here to talk about, next slide please, our current traveling shows. Um, Mindworks is our newest show, which focuses on um, how your own mind and how you think, feel and react. Um, it is 6,000 to 7,000 square feet, flexible design to accommodate um, many types of display areas, multiple station interactive exhibits, and bilingual in French and English. And we hope that after visiting MindWorks, visitors will leave knowing something more about themselves and how they think and react to life and possibly reflect on some of the things that make them them. Next slide, please. Some of the topics to explore, emotions, uh, influencing behavior, memory, habits, decision-making, critical thinking, and creativity. Next slide, please. And here's just a list of several of the various different experiences that they will go through as they explore those topics. Next slide, please. And we also have additional traveling exhibitions available, such as Imaginate, uh, it's 6,000 square feet. It is available this year. However, there is a hold for fall and spring of early 2024, so act now. It's about being part artist, part engineer, and part scientist in this innovative incubator. Circus Under the Big Top, booked for summer 2023. We're super excited. Uh, visitors learn about the science behind the circus by performing, examining, and living through the magic of circus. And Motion Mania, one of our smaller but mighty exhibitions, also booked for 2023, but available into the, from the fall into 2024. Help children find their inner scientists and learn about energy and motion with energy tracks. And the ever popular Build Your Own Coaster, which we also have available for sale if anyone's looking for one. Next slide, please. We are also a host venue. Our facility can host 3,000 to 15,000 square feet of traveling exhibitions. The fabulous Heather Farnworth, Director of Business Development, would be your main contact for that. So please feel free to reach out to Heather. And if you have any other questions about our shows or to uh, book them and chat with us, please contact us on the slide here and we'll follow up uh, following this event. Thank you, team. Bye for now. Good, great morning from the Pacific Northwest, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great morning. Uh, I'm Daniel Guyton, the Travel Museum Manager for the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. And what you're looking at is our brand new brand being unveiled for the first time in the national audience. So I hope you guys enjoy some color. Um, next slide, please. Uh, first exhibit I want to talk about, and the last time you'll see these renderings, that is, is currently uh, becoming real life, uh, is Creativitat Silvestre or Wild Creativity, uh, that is a de design challenge based biomimicry influence 
2,500 square foot exhibit. It's bilingual with Spanish leading first, much like we've done with uh, previous exhibits. Uh, the intended target audience is 9 to 14, and it's got a lot of great classics uh, that we have added some quantitative feedback into it. So if you ever wanted to know how fast your or how much force of uh, the what you're creating in an air tube actually generates, uh, we're going to show that to you. Next slide, please. Uh, the next one that we have is Snow, Tiny Crystals Global Impact. Um, it's a beautiful exhibit, also 2,500 square foot. Um, you can catch snow crystals in our beautiful falling snow interactive exhibit that is touchless still um, and learn about uh, all of the things in the life cycle of snow that then uh, impact us, our water usage, and our world around us. Um, and you can also make some lovely snow floats uh, without having water around. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, last exhibit that I would like to discuss is Allegra Mente. This is an early childhood brain development exhibit uh, that really shows caregivers uh, all that they need uh, to really impact their kids' brain development at the early stages of life. And it has some interactives to engage those young and early learners so that you can read all about your impact. Next slide, please. Um, and then we have some near-term availability uh, that we would love to talk to you about. Next slide. And we are also a host, and we're looking for uh, exhibit space beginning March 2024 for our 12,000 square foot exhibit. Uh, so if you have something that fits that space and fits our style, please give us a call. Hi, everyone. I am not Paul Goulet. Uh, Paul was not able to make it today. Uh, next slide, please. My name is Shane McConnell. I am the Director of Sales and Marketing for Little Ray's Exhibitions. Um, first off, before I get into the exhibits, I really wanted to uh, take the time to um, say congratulations. We have Emmy Saunders, who you may have worked with in the past from the Las Vegas Springs Preserve, who is coming on our, onto our team to be the interim executive director for Little Ray's exhibitions. This is really just so Paul can have more time to go skiing, um, really focus on the things that he, he needs to do. Um, next slide, please. Um, we are, uh, we've got a lot on the go. So uh, we, we've got some exhibits that are on the tour. We have some near uh, term availability. It's some still in 2023. So give us a call or email. We do still have our, our fantastic partnership with Minotaur Mises as well. So if you're looking for something really massive and want to combine some of our exhibits, let us know. We'd be happy to do so. Next slide, please. Um, the biggest thing that we have to announce is that we actually just hired a new uh, sculptor to join our team who is creating some new interactive outdoor and most importantly, climbable statue based exhibits. These are going to be able to be paired with our indoor exhibits, as well as to be a standalone exhibit for your outdoor spaces. If you guys are interested, just let us know. We'd be happy to send you more information what they look like. Next slide, please. And finally, we have we are officially announcing the launch of Turtles, the uh, probably our most uh, exciting exhibit for summer 2025. Uh, this is going to be uh, probably a whole new step in the evolution of our our exhibits, and uh, we'll be sending out some mock-ups very soon. It's looking incredible. Next slide, please. And that's it. Shoot us an email at uh, shane at littlerays.org or visit our website at exhibits.littlerays.org. Thanks, everyone. Hi, folks. I'm Brody Sanderson. I'm currently the uh, acting director of exhibitions here at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. We're located in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and uh, we're the newest of Canada's federal museums. Our mandate is to explore the subject of human rights with special but not exclusive reference to Canada in order to enhance the public's understanding of human rights and to promote respect for others, encourage reflection and dialogue about human rights issues. I'd love to show you around our beautiful building and our exhibit sometimes, so please come to Winnipeg, ask for me by name, I'll show you around. Um, today I'm introducing two new traveling exhibitions that are currently in development. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Beyond the Beat, Music of Resistance and Change. 
Popular music embodies our social and political ideas, spans generations, bridges geographical divides, and crosses intercultural boundaries. Focusing on the dynamic relationship between artist and audience, this exhibition will invite visitors inside groundbreaking moments when music played a pivotal role in social transformation and political change. It includes iconic artifacts, mixed media, original films and interviews with musicians, immersive environments, and digital interactive elements. Also plenty of music, of course. Um, the exhibition will showcase the power of music to Body our highest aspirations for freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, the size of the exhibition is roughly 5,000 square feet. Next slide, please. We're also currently working on uh, Dangerously Different, Canada's Queer Purge and the Struggle for Human Rights, which is a working title right now. It draws on first-hand first -hand accounts to tell the story of how from the 50s to the 90s, uh, queer members of the Canadian military, uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and the Federal Civil Service in Canada were investigated, interrogated, and removed from their jobs. Uh, it's a little-known story. Um, the exhibition explores how queer people resisted this purge through political activism and legal challenges that expanded human rights protections for all Canadians. Uh, our visitors will be inspired to help create a future in which the rights of all people are respected. This important story is brought to life through rich interpretive and mixed media elements, and looks at what can happen when rights are violated and the power of those who resist the injustice. Again, the size is roughly 5,000 square feet. Next slide, please. So the CMHR is a world leader in accessible design, informs all of our exhibition development, uh, from three-dimensional tactile images to embedded sign language, to descriptive audio and wheelchair accessible viewing heights and tables. All of our traveling exhibitions and core exhibitions include accessible features that create inclusive experiences for everybody. Next slide, please. Uh, our digital projects are designed to immerse visitors in the stories they're exploring. We pride ourselves on staying at the forefront of digital storytelling technology and implement digital interactivity in all of our core and traveling exhibitions. Next slide, please. We're at time, Brody, thanks. Okay, no problem, that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, if you wanna follow up with me, I'd love to talk to you folks further about the, the current exhibitions and development. Thanks so much. Hello everyone, I'm Troy Carlson with Stage Iron Exhibitions. And uh, uh, first off, I just wanna share our projects with you. Uh, Lost World of Dragons, which we are looking for a, a, a 11th hour booking for um, Toytopia, Hollow Heroes, Sweet, A Tasty Journey, Rock You, the Institute of Rock and Roll, the Animation Academy, Popnology, and Expedition Dinosaur. Next slide, please. Uh, based on the uh, on the popularity of our original exhibition dinosaur, we had several venues that are asking for the next chapter, and so we looked at it almost as a trilogy. And so, where the original exhibition dinosaur left off, we worked with uh, famed paleontologist Tom Williamson and his area of expertise on the early mammals and their er their fast evolution um, after the uh, mass extinction. So, exhibition dinosaur uh, debuted. Uh, just last year and has done incredibly well. It does feature what we call the Asteroid Experience, which is an immersive 360 theater uh, where you can visually and uh, through audio listen and understand what it was like if you were uh, around uh, when the asteroid came overhead and the impact. It is opening at an exploration place in Wichita, Kansas. On January 16th, if you are close to check it out. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this exhibition in uh, the animatronics and the uh, interactives, which we are really known for. This exhibit has over 20 interactive stations, uh, feathered uh, dinosaurs, and just it's just a beautiful, immersive uh, exhibition, including one of the first exhibits to have. Uh, early mammals that are animatronic in the exhibition. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and, and true to our uh, really uh, immersive experience, uh, you're greeted by a uh, an old Willie's pickup. Um, and you can see in these slides here, there's uh, uh, CT scanners uh, where you can un uncover what's in uh, the pieces of rock, um, learn about the uh, KPG layer, um, fossils, it really encompasses everything that people expect from uh, a dinosaur exhibition, plus so much more. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Troy, we're at time. 
Okay, just really quickly, I'm here in uh, San Diego, and we want to introduce, let anyone know who wants to come to the opening of Animation Academy at Comic-Con Museum. We are offering uh, complimentary flights and uh, hotel accommodation. Just reach out to me or Amy or Carrie at EDG. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Sarah Macy with Dino Dawn. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining and a big thank you to Mac and the uh, 10 board of volunteers for organizing this event. It's really great to be able to connect uh, outside of our conferences in a little bit of a new format as well. Uh, next slide. As the name implies, uh, we do a lot of dinosaurs. Uh, our exhibitions are done both uh, indoors and outdoors. Uh, we pride ourselves on being very flexible to meet the needs of uh, our institutional partners. Uh, and you know, all, in all, we have about 400 robotic creatures that we keep in our inventory. But in addition to that, we have a large collection of original skeleton cats. So we like to work with our, our partners to find out what's gonna be, uh, work best for them. Do they want an indoor and outdoor display, one or the other, um, and what theme we want those to fit. But all of our robotics are made under direct scientific supervision and they all move and they make sound. So they can do things like breathe and we can even have some fun and make them do things like fart and pee. Next slide. But in addition to dinosaurs, we have uh, other themes of our exhibitions. We have uh, Ice Age Mammals Collection. Uh, so we can, uh, again, uh, kind of show that transitional story uh, between creatures and over time, or we can display those as, as their whole. We're working on one of Max since he said he's been working since the Ice Age. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, we also have a couple of versions of our Insectopia uh, exhibitions, one that features dragons and fantastic beasts, which explores animals, mythologies, and cultures around the world. And then our newest that we developed in partnership with the uh, Houston Zoo is Ocean Odyssey that features giant sea creatures from uh, the depths of the sea risen to land. Uh, we also are able, when we're thinking about um, time zones and being or times of hosting and being flexible, uh, if we're thinking about late fall or winter, we can get really creative with those lease fees uh, and do those as either a gate share or a reduced rental fee. So we'd love to talk to you about that. Next slide. Thank you, Sam. And our, uh, is that time? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So go ahead and please reach out. Love to talk to you more about uh, the opportunities that we have. Thanks. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am, do I have video? Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Reed. Many of you know me from my work uh, with traveling exhibitions over the past 10 years. I worked on all types of productions and primarily focused on producing marketable exhibitions for my North American network and pairing them with ideal venues throughout their tours. My new company, which I started in November, Dollop Projects, allows me to offer my consultation services to museums and traveling exhibition producers to ensure their project success. Heidi Pinchel at Brand Image Group was kind enough to share her speaking slot with me so that I could share my new service offerings with you. Slide, please. I'm advocating for venues to search, select, and negotiate incoming traveling exhibitions on their behalf. And slide, please. And I consult with producers and new traveling exhibitions, uh, primarily for, from a sales perspective, starting with concept marketability through new bookings, sales strategy, and coaching. Slide, please. Um, this is for Heidi. Heidi's friends in Quebec, Eloise, have a beautiful immersive exhibition already available in March, coming from Niagara Falls. Arctic, a man under the ice, is an immersive journey to a mysterious and virtually inaccessible place, the Canadian Arctic. Visitors will journey through breathtaking landscapes, through large-scale projections, and witness polar bears, walruses, sea angels, and more. Contact Heidi if you have interest in space in 2023. Slide, please. My first consulting project is with Illusion Projects, the producer behind a Barbie fashion history exhibition that displayed this past year in Las Vegas. The producer has never traveled an exhibition before and is keen to enter the museum market, so I'm helping them to properly prepare the exhibition for a museum tour. The exhibition is loaded with more than 250 vintage dolls, environments, and interactivity, and it's available as early as this year. Slide, please. 
Get in touch with Heidi to discuss the Arctic exhibition. Contact me if you're interested in my consultation services and or Barbie. Thank you. All right. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Matt Heenan from the American Museum of Natural History. Nice to see everyone again, and thanks to everyone who organized this. Uh, the clock's ticking, so um, next, next slide, please. Right, for those of you who are looking for a great cost-effective way to bring AMH paleo content to your venue, we've just launched our first 2D dinosaur exhibition, Dinosaurs Among Us. This flexible, engaging exhibition tells the amazing story of the transition from the familiar charismatic dinosaurs we all know into a new airborne form, birds. Audiences examine the links between birds and dinosaurs across several key areas, including babies, eggs and nests, bones, beaks and claws, and feathers in flight. The exhibition has been created for bilingual presentation and is available already in English and Spanish. It features a flexible design and is adaptable to venues of all shapes and sizes, indoors and out. Next slide, please. I'm very happy to announce that we've started working with the La Caixa Foundation in Spain, representing some of the amazing exhibitions that many of you may have seen at different Cosmo Caixa venues. It's an exciting development for us and you'll be hearing more throughout the year. To start though, the first exhibition I'd like to introduce is the one you see here, Talking Brains. Talking Brains exhibits our brain from the point of view of its linguistic functions, taking a scientific approach to language that stresses its psychological and biological constitution and its binding link with neuroscience, genetics, anatomy, and human evolution. The focus is on creating experiences, exciting the imagination, and teaching what language means for us and how it connects to our biology. Next slide, please. Mirrors in and out of reality is also from Lacacia Foundation and invites visitors to step through the looking glass to discover what mirrors hide and most importantly, what they reveal. The exhibition features a mesmerizing maze of mirror games, kaleidoscopes and other interactive elements. Visitors of all ages will deepen their understanding of our perception of reality from a scientific standpoint and learn how mirrors have been used in real world research. Visitors will also be encouraged to rethink the world and uncover some of the secrets that surround them. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Well, look at that. You're Perfect time. timing. Yeah. <laughs> out of time. My contact details, reach out. Thank you. Bye. Hi, my name is Wyatt Estes from the Field Museum, and we have four exciting projects to share with you today. Next slide. The first is Antarctic dinosaurs, reduced in size to 5,500 square feet and available this fall. This exhibition concept remains identical to the original version. In consideration of size and budget, we focus the exhibition to emphasize the breadth of dinosaurs discovered in Antarctica. What remains is a compelling adventure to the frozen continent where visitors learn what it takes to research these specimens, what the dinosaurs landscape would have looked like in the current environment of the continent today. Next slide. Available spring 2024, this 5,000 square foot exhibition is an opportunity for your visitors to fall in love with the largest, most complete and best preserved Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. Featuring a fully articulated cast of Sue, a fleshy replica feasting on an Edmontosaurus and a cast of Sue's nemesis, the Triceratops, this exhibition sparks intrigue for visitors of all ages, complete with touchable interactives, a state-of-the-art light show and an op optional fossil add-on package. Sue, the T-Rex experience is sure to incite, excite a sense of wonder. Next slide. Death, Life's Greatest Mystery, explores questions about mortality through artifacts, specimens, and immersive media experiences. On view now at the field and available summer 2024, this 7,500 square foot exhibition features a whale fall replica. It explores how cultures and religions perceive immortality and investigates how wildlife can cheat death in extreme conditions. Visitors are also invited to reflect on the memories of loved ones near the exhibition's conclusion. Developed for all audiences, this exhibition continues to outperform expectations here at the field. We're confident it will inspire your audiences too. Next slide. Finally, take a trip to the spectrum in wild color. Developed into a 5,000 square foot traveling version available summer 2024, this exhibition invites audiences to discover exceptional field museum specimens with opportunities to add remarkable items from your own collections. Visitors will explore, for example, how reptiles, insects, and fish create blue with microscopic light bending structures. The sensory experience provides visitors with an opportunity to decompress, interact, and be dazzled by color in the world around them. Next slide. We look forward to hearing from you. Please reach out to Evelyn or myself via email directly or through the email address on your screen. Thank you so much. Hi, John 
is not able to join us. So I am just pretending. Uh, I'm Mark Garrow from Science North. Uh, so along with our fantastic partner in Ripley Entertainment, we are pleased to let you know of some upcoming availability for the Science of Guinness World Records. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Through four exciting zones, visitors will explore what, exactly what it takes to make a Guinness World Record and how anyone, anywhere can achieve amazing and set their own records. Uh, the exhibit also provides the opportunity to leave a legacy in your community uh, with several of our host sites already setting their own world records uh, through official adjudication events. Uh, the exhibit draws on the similarities between the scientific method and record-breaking attempts and how we can use science to learn, persevere, and have fun attempting to break records. Uh, explore exciting artifacts, test your skills, and compete with your friends and family to be at the top of the daily leaderboard. Uh, next slide. Next slide. You can contact myself uh, or John for more information and uh, availability. We do have some short-term availability as well as some longer-term availability in that exhibit. Um, Science North also has some exciting brand new exhibits for you. Skeletons in partnership with Skeletons Museum of Osteology and the Arizona Science Center invite you to explore the science of osteology and engage with skeletons in an up-close and personal way than ever before. The hands-on interactive exhibit will provide visitors with a new way of understanding the interconnectedness of animals' everyday life, health, form, and functional advantages through their bones. Uh, that will launch at Science North in spring 2024. You can be the first site in fall 2024. So ask me about that today. Uh, also through an exciting partnership with Kingsman, we're excited to bring you uh, Living Worlds and Animal Planet Experience. Uh, 10,000 square foot immersive interactive and educational experience will captivate your visitors. The first of its kind wildlife and conservation exhibition. Uh, witness rare video footage from Animal Planet and learn about endangered species and how we can promote conservation with everyday changes that are collectively as powerful as environmental policies. Um, if I have a little bit of time, I should have slides that will be posted as well. So you can check those out or contact me. Uh, we also have some other permanent installations and some exhibits on sale. Uh, so ask me about Arctic Voices and our Nature Exchange. Hey everybody, it's Mark Greenberg, Evergreen Exhibitions. Uh, next slide, please. So sharks, uh, created by the Australian Museum. Uh, so guess what? It's an exhibition about sharks, but it's really also an exhibition about us. Uh, sharks are now in a grave danger between climate change, industrial fishing, pollution, they're all damaging our oceans. And the health of our oceans is directly related to the health of our planet and of course us. So in this exhibition, visitors are invited into a world dominated by the members of the shark family to explore their genetic diversity, territories, interactions, and significance to the ocean ecosystems. Next slide, please. So this exhibition debuted at the Australian Museum in September. Uh, last September, the world tour begins this October. And really, who better to produce an exhibition on sharks than the Australian Museum? Uh, they have their own marine research institution, and Australian waters have over one-third of the world's shark species, making Australia a uniquely placed for shark study and research. Um, the exhibition contains breathtaking lifelike models uh, displayed throughout the exhibition. Great immersive experiences, some tactile interactive displays, and you really do explore the diverse world of sharks, not just you know, the ones everyone knows about, great whites, but the quirky ones too, the funny ones. Uh, and then, of course, what we think is also very unique is we explore this human shark cultural connection across a diverse range of First Nations peoples, uh, for whom sharks are often sacred and powerful creatures uh, that are treated with respect, not fear or loathing. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an example of our Oceanarium, uh, one of the cutting edge audiovisual media presentations where you actually feel like you're in an aquarium. Um, it has this immersive theater, theater and you experience hundreds of sharks swimming around you, which is very, very cool. Um, and sharks is so the latest offering from the Australian Museum. We're also touring these cool tyrannosaurs and spiders exhibitions, also from the Australian Museum. All are now bilingual. Next slide, please. Finally, we have our great STEAM exhibitions that are now available in three to 6,000 square feet, our Above and Beyond, which is our interactive flight exhibition where you can actually design your own jet plane and then fly it through an obstacle course. And then of course, our To the Extreme, uh, an exhibition that really examines math and engineering, where you can jump on an actual snowboard and then carve your way down a mountain. 
uh, fight off cyber attacks, and, it, um, and then even uh, take a picture in 360 and email it to yourself, just like in the matrix. Uh, next slide, please. My name is Mark Greenberg. My colleagues, Christy and Anne, are also available. I'll put our info in the chat, as well as some links. We have some great video uh, and content uh, for all of our exhibitions. You can find out more there, or please feel free to contact us. I'm done. Thanks. Good afternoon from Edinburgh. I'm Callum from National Museum Scotland, and I'm talking about Audubon's Birds of America, which is available from late 2023. Next slide, please. In the 1800s, John James Audubon, the ornithologist, was rejected initially by his American peers, but found support in Edinburgh to publish The Birds of America. Um, this is an internationally renowned publication of ornithological illustration that we focus on in the exhibition. Um, it's one of the rarest and most coveted books in the world because of how beautiful the illustrations are. And they're also absolutely magnificent, almost a metre in height. And our collection of Audubon prints is actually individually framed um, and unbound, which means you'll be able to display 46 of them um, all together. Um, next slide, please. Um, Audubon's contributions to natural sciences are still hotly debated. So was he a leading scientist of his time or was he a charlatan? And throughout the exhibition, we openly examine the controversies of Audubon's life and what they mean for us in a contemporary context. And we do this through a series of films, ambient music and bird song, which complement the framed prints, books, letters and artifacts to create a rich visitor experience. And the exhibition has really broad appeal and treads the line between science and art. Next slide, please. And um, so sadly, because of hunting, habitat loss and climate change, many of the bird species that Audubon depicted are now highly vulnerable or extinct. The exhibition considers the uncertain future of bird life and our responsibility to protect the fragile beauty of nature. Next slide, please. Audubon's Birds of America is available to tour from late 2023. And the tour starts at the wonderful Compton Verney estate in England from the 1st of July. It's a really adaptable exhibition and suits a range of gallery spaces. We would recommend a minimum of 500 meters squared with climate control. Next slide, please. So we'd be really delighted to tour this beautiful exhibition to North America and beyond. You can download the full tour pack from our website. We're also, we'd be thrilled to discuss it with you as well. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Henna. I'm based at the Science Museum in London, and I'm delighted to talk to you about our latest blockbuster touring exhibition, Science Fiction, Voyage to the Edge of Imagination. Next slide, please. This is an immersive exhibition focused on how science inspires science fiction and vice versa. Visitors are taken on an exciting journey aboard a spacecraft involving objects, innovations and stories from around the world to give them an understanding of how powerful imagination can be and how it inspires the future. Next slide, please. The visitor journey involves a set of dynamic experiences. There are three major immersive zones, the shuttle where visitors are onboarded, the off-world where visitors visit another world, and the observation deck, which gives the chance to see our world from a new perspective. There are also three key content zones, offering a mix of objects, interactives, and fun moments, orientation zones, and throughout the exhibition are star objects from celebrated franchises to provide powerful wow moments. Next slide, please. Here are some pictures from the exhibition. So in the top right is the shuttle where visitors are onboarded and where they meet their AI guide who takes them through the exhibition. And then we've got some pictures here from the exploration deck in the bio lab. And you might be able to see some objects from franchises such as Doctor Who, Star Trek, Alien, iRobot and so on. Next slide, please. We have some more pictures here from the exhibition. So in the top left is our off-world area. And then there's just some pictures here from the computer core and visualization deck areas as well. Next slide, please. And these are the final details for the exhibition. It's currently being displayed in the Science Museum here in London. So if you are ever here, please do pop in and see it. Um, otherwise it's available to tour in North America from 2026 onwards. If you have any questions or would like any other information, please do get in touch with me. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Tamara Honestjuk from the Royal Ontario Museum located in Toronto, Canada. 
RAM is Canada's largest museum that showcases exhibitions on art, culture, and nature. We are a venue as well as a provider of traveling exhibitions. We have many traveling exhibitions in our portfolio, and I'm bringing three of these to your attention today. Next slide, please. Psychedelics is a new exhibition that challenges the decades old narrative that psychedelics are dangerous drugs. Featuring objects, botanical specimens, and interactives, this transdisciplinary exhibition explores the importance of altered states of consciousness. Underpinned with scientific and medical scholarship and broad consultation, visitors will realize that the psychedelic renaissance is a global event rooted in indigenous science, learn how psychedelics were used throughout history as well as for therapeutic and spiritual purposes, and question psychedelics misconceptions to gain new insights on the potential benefit in psychological well-being. This 500, sorry, this 5,500 square foot exhibition opens at ROM next March and will tour to only three venues from the fall of 2024. Next slide, please. Bloodsuckers from legends to leeches answers all your biting questions about blood feeding creatures both natural and supernatural. The exhibition takes visitors on a journey exploring, exploring blood feeding through different perspectives from their value in the ecosystem to the inspiration offered to cultures across the globe, to their influence in medicine for over 3000 years. This 8,000 square foot exhibition includes over 100 specimens, objects and props, plus interactives, AV and immersive experiences. The overall winner of the 2019 AAM Excellence in Exhibition Awards, Bloodsuckers opens at the Field Museum this October and will continue to tour in the fall of 2024. Next slide, please. Being and belonging explores the critical issues of our time of being and belonging from the perspective of 25 diverse transnational and intergenerational women artists from the Islamic world. Featuring over 40 works in a variety of media, the exhibition examines ideas of home, community, migration, politics, sexuality, and the environment. Being in Belonging opens at ROM this July, and we're looking for two venues to join this exclusive tour. Next slide, please. Thank you, Tamara. Should any of these be, oh, sorry, so just finishing up. So if anything is of interest to you, please feel free to reach out. Thanks. Hello, my name is Michaela Henry, and I am the Business Development Coordinator with the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh. Next slide, please. We have two new traveling exhibits debuting in 2023. Opposites Abstract, a Mo Willems exhibit, is our second exhibit with award-winning author and illustrator Mo Willems based on his recent book, Opposites Abstract. Explore the complicated yet simple concepts of opposites through interactive components and art-making activities related to the artist's collection of paintings of pairs of opposites. The exhibit travels with the original artwork framed and will premiere at the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh the first weekend of February. If you're in Pittsburgh around that time, please come check it out. Tour begins fall 2023. Next slide, please. Aim High Soaring with the Tuskegee Airmen is our second new exhibit that explores multiple aspects of aviation, from the rich history of the Tuskegee Airmen to 21st century STEM concepts. Visitors of all ages will be able to imagine themselves in the role of the aviators inspired by the fat past to dream of the future. Tour begins fall 2023, but next available is summer 2025. Next slide, please. The next two exhibits are available to rent at special pricing for fall 2023. Very Eric Carl allows visitors to step into the pages of your favorite books by Eric Carl and experience them as an artist, reader, and character. Children of all ages will enjoy this colorful exhibit. Next slide, please. XOXO, an exhibit about love and forgiveness, encourages you to play, act silly, and learn how to process your feelings. Using facial expressions, words, movement, art making, XOXO explores what love and forgiveness means to you and to others. This wonderfully thoughtful exhibit could be at your venue this fall. Next slide, please. Thank you so much all for your time. Again, my name is Michaela Hendry. Contact information is provided as well as our website, and we hope to bring one of these exhibits to you soon. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me in this session. My name is Helen Wong. I am Export Marketing Manager at Universe Science in Paris. I would like to present you our new exhibition, Banquet. Next, please. 
Banquet exhibition is a treat for all senses. Imagine yourself experiencing food and feasting through sight, smell, taste, touch, and sound. With banquet exhibition, we invite every visitor to a great banquet, starting with a journey from the kitchen to the table, where science and gastronomy blend as one. Next, please. Where does the experience begin? In the kitchen, of course. In this space, part kitchen, part laboratory, the visitors will become promising cooks as they go back to basics. They will learn food preparation techniques, discover scientific knowledge and recipe ideas, but also the well-kept secrets from prestigious chef. Next, please. After the kitchen and the cooking part, it is time to taste. Taste is about 80% smell and through a series of multi-sensory experience, sometimes yummy, sometimes yuck, visitors can discover how senses may be deceiving, but also how their senses work when they eat. Next, please. Finally comes the long awaited moment of celebration. The visitors is now a dinner guest sitting down to the experience, a unique menu invented especially for the exhibition by French chief Thierry Marx and scientist Raphael Aumont. In an immersive show, smells combined with image mapping and surround sound. It creates a special atmosphere where the table comes alive, creating a dreamlike banquet for the visitor to experience. Next, please. If this exhibition has made you hungry, please contact me or our representative in North America, Debbie from Imagine Exhibitions. The exhibition is available from winter 2023, uh, 23, sorry, and is 600 square meters. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you to TEN and ILE for organizing this forum. I'm Michelle Wright, the Traveling Exhibits Manager at the Minnesota Children's Museum. At the Minnesota Children's Museum, we believe that play is powerful and universal, and we create exhibits where families have fun together and children take the lead. MCM has the largest collection of children's traveling exhibits on the road. Our exhibits provide organizations with highly immersive educational experiences that boost attendance, engage visitors, and spark learning. Slide. Sean the Sheep Flock This Way is a new exhibit that provides opportunities to solve problems in a variety of ways, from rescuing a member of the flock from a tree, creating a stop motion animation, and traversing a barn wall. This fun exhibit brings attention to problem solving in social emotional contexts and has some availability in 2025. Well, uh, slide please. Walls and Gromit Get Cracking is another new exhibit that began its tour this year. This exhibit presents problems in Wallace's world where inventions and contraptions go often terribly, but hilariously wrong. This exhibit has availability in spring of 2024 and spots in 2025. Slide. We still have lots of availability for 2024, including our popular Wild Kratz exhibit, the beloved Thomas and Friends, and our STEM-based exhibit with Curious George. As a venue, we are looking for a 1,500 to 2,500 square foot exhibit aimed at children ages three to nine. And we are looking to fill 2024 and beyond. Slide. If you have any questions or would like to reach out um, for about a booking, you can contact me, Michelle Wright at mwright at mcm.org um, or my phone number here. And thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ed with the Smithsonian Traveling Exhibition Service. Next slide, please. Our new bilingual exhibition, Caribbean Indigenous Resistance, Taino Live On, tells the enduring story of the Taino people, one of the original peoples of the Caribbean. The exhibit examines the history of these Spanish and English speaking islands and the legacy of Caribbean Indigenous knowledge throughout the world. Visitors learn about Caribbean Indigenous survival through stories, contemporary crafts, musical instruments, and utilitarian objects. The exhibit includes video content, more than 60 striking images and graphics on freestanding structures. Next slide, please. Knowing Nature, Stories of the Boreal Forest focuses on the biodiversity and global importance of, the, of our northernmost forest through first-person com stories, commissioned objects, interactive experiences, and exquisite photography and video. The Boreal Forest stores more carbon 
than most tropical forests and plays a significant role in stabilizing our climate. It is also home to hundreds of sovereign indig indigenous nations. Their ways of knowing nature offer a vision for a sustainable future. This timely exhibit integrates the themes of climate change, indigenous perspectives, and the relationship between people and nature. Knowing Nature offers stories of resilience, strength, and hope in a changing world, and is fully bilingual in English and Spanish. Next slide, please. Waterways dives into water, an essential component of life on our planet, environmentally, culturally, and historically. In societies around the globe, water serves as a source of peace and contemplation. Authors and artists are inspired by the complex character of water, a substance that is both soft and graceful, and yet a powerful and nearly unsolvable force. Water also plays a practical role in American society. The availability of water affected settlement and migration patterns. Access to and control of water have long been a central part of economic planning. Americans are connected to water in ways they may not realize. And since water is a shared resource, water connects everyone. <clears throat> With compelling text, imagery, interactives, and videos, Waterways reveals the central nature of water in our lives. Next slide, please. What can one of the sea's most unusual looking mammals tell us about the future of our oceans? The elusive narwhal with its magnificent spiral tooth has inspired art, legend, and cultural practice for centuries. Today, narwhal revealing an Arctic legend offers insights into the relationship between narwhals and our changing global climate through the work of Arctic researchers and the personal experiences of Inuit community members. Narwhal features a 16 foot full scale fiberglass model of an adult narwhal suspended from the ceiling. The model is surrounded by interactives, graphic panels, objects and models that pull audiences into the narwhal story. Next slide, please. Here is my contact info and our web address. We look forward to working with you to bring the Smithsonian and your added content to your community. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Seth from Sentinel Exhibitions, and I have three brand new shows for you. Um, so new that we don't really even have photos. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so first of all, we have Disney 100. This is the official exhibition for uh, Disney's 100th anniversary, and it's being assembled for the very first time upstairs here at the Franklin Institute. And it will be every bit as amazing as you would expect a show to be that is all about Disney. And we have, um, uh, it's 15,000 square feet, so it's huge. And uh, lots of immersive galleries and artifacts. And anyway, it's Disney, you get it. So um, we have openings for the rest of the tour. Um, slots two and three are penciled in, but we might have some options there as well. So anytime after October 20th of this year, yeah, hit me up if you think you might wanna host this show. Um, and also we're going to do one in Europe too. So if you're not in the United States of America, you can hit me up for that as well. Um, next slide, please. Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. So this one we built, um, we just had it at Comic-Con Museum in San Diego and it's um, pretty kick-ass. So we decided, hey, let's tour it briefly. So we're going to do a three city tour for this. Slot one is already spoken for us. Next slide, please. Um, it's about 7,500 square feet, and like most of our shows, it requires a fairly high ceiling. Um, so we have this um, late this fall um, available. I think like you could open it early November, and then um, one more slot after that. Uh, next slide, please. And um, yeah, our Marvel exhibit that's been touring the U.S. is super popular, so we're doing a second one, and um, it will be available. Um, starting in 2025. And by the way, if you want to come to the premiere in Philadelphia on February 15 or 16, hit me up. I'll put a note in the chat about that. Thank you. I think that's the end of my turn. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Ann Rashford, and I am Director and AVP of Government Relations and Business Development at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Next slide, please. So Numbers in Nature, A Mirror Maze started out as a permanent exhibition at MSI and proved to be so successful, we created a traveling version. It is a six to 8,000 square foot exhibition that's interactive and immersive. And the highlight is a, 20, a 2,000 mirror maze. Next. There are many hands-on interactives in the exhibit that allow guests to explore patterns in nature, their bodies, art, architecture, and music. And it features an array of artifacts that demonstrate patterns in objects from the natural world. 
The exhibit is available throughout 2023. So if you're looking for a great exhibit at a great price, please reach out. Next. The Museum of Science and Industry has been producing exhibitions for Black History Months for the past 50 years. And we've decided to make that content available in a do-it-yourself format for museums, libraries, and schools. From the ground up, Black Architects and Designers is a do-it-yourself exhibition that is designed to fit your space, schedule, and budget, and rents for $20,000. Okay. The exhibit highlights 24 past, present, and emerging architects. Next. Templates have been created for the venue to add local content and secure local sponsors. We all know how difficult it is to get a sponsor for $100,000, $300,000, but to be able to um, get a sponsor, a reach out to your local community for $2,500, $5,000 really makes it accessible to the community and also makes it um, part of the fabric of the venue that it's hosting. Um, the exhibit includes a historic timeline, media interviews, and a very robust education guide. Next. Um, the exhibit opens in Seattle next month at the Museum of History and Industry, so please feel free to check it out there or come to MSI. The exhibit has been extended three times, so we have a version also at MSI. And um, reach out if you're interested in numbers in nature or Black creativity, architects, and designers. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brad Massey. I'm the Curator of Public History at the Tampa Bay History Center, and today I'm going to talk to you about our traveling show, Cuban Pathways. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about the show, Why Cuba? One thing we wanted to do here at the History Center is tell a long 500-year story of Cuba, because a lot of exhibits on Cuba have focused on particular periods, in particular, um, the Castro period. So we wanted to tell a broader story. And so what we wanted to do was talk about the diverse groups of people that came to Cuba over the last 500 years. So we focus on three particular pathways, the Chinese Cuban pathway, an Afro-Cuban pathway, and a Spanish Cuban pathway. So that's the backbone of the exhibit. Uh, next uh, slide, please. And the show has a bunch of objects, um, roughly over 70 objects, and they run the gamut from um, Roomba dolls, as you can see here, from um, the high point of Cuban tourism, which was in the early 1900s. And then we also have some contemporary pieces. On the left right there is a Cuban refugee vessel that we, will, we were able to secure. Um, this vessel was used in September of 2021, and we were able to get the vessel and put it on display. So we have a lot of interesting objects that tell different stories. Uh, next slide, please. With that said, one of our, our fun things that we have in the exhibit is a gigantic six foot view master that flips through images of Cuba's tourist history. And it's been real interesting. Um, people have engaged with it in different ways. And then you can see right behind there, we have individual view masters where you can see um, pictures from Cuba in the 1950s. We also have a musical interactive with bongo drums that's been very popular. Next slide, please. Um, this is just a picture of the chug. As you see, it's been divvied up into three pieces so we can more easily display it and ship it. Um, the last slide, please. So uh, it's 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. Exhibit copy is bilingual. Cost is $10,000 plus one-way shipping. We have some other options. And if you would like to book or learn more, learn more about the exhibit, please contact me. I'm Brad Massey at the Tampa Bay History Center. Thank you very much. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. I'm Annick Dorian Coupal, Head of Outreach and International Relations at the Musée de la Civilisation in Quebec City. And I'm very excited and happy to be amongst you as this is being our first participation for the Musée and I to this great forum. Uh, so as our motto indicates, experiencing the world together is the basis of our actions as a society museum. And I hope we will have the opportunity to establish collaborations and exchanges to contribute to providing unforgettable unforgettable museum experiences to our audiences and to make our world a better place. Next slide, please. 
So Mozilla Civilization has been doing things differently for over 30 years, developing enriching collaborations and partnerships is over in over 30 countries around the world, presenting more than 450 exhibitions on topics expanded through thousands of education and cultural activities, placing people at the heart of a transformative experience, attuning to trends and the most promising innovations and thriving partnerships. So our know-how is deployed through a museology of illicit emotion, a multidisciplinary participatory and engaging approach, creative, immersive and audacious exhibition designs and cutting edge museum circuits, formats and means. And being a change, agent and key reference to understand the major issues that affect humanity. Next slide, please. A year at the museum is between six to 800,000 visitors, 10 exhibitions on a range of themes, two new major international exhibitions. So following, I'm very proud to present you two of our new international touring exhibitions, both delivered as turnkey, French and English, and say, um, size of 600 to 800 square meters. Next, please. So the first one is Love Me Gender. This exhibition is about diversity and gender identities and expressions. It involves invites visitors to reconsider their perceptions and support gender equality and diversity for a more inclusive society. So it's being presented in Quebec from May 23 to April 24, and it will be available for touring from fall 24. Its programming focuses history and society. It targets ages groups from 35 to 50, but also 18 to 34. Seven thematic areas, original and immersive design, nearly 200 objects from various collections, interactive stations, videos, educational program, and so. So next, please. And our second mm -hmm. excrementally interesting touristy touring exhibition is Oh Shit, from our intimate and collective relationship to poop, to sanitary issues and ancient and contemporary customs around defecation by way of intestinal microbiota and the hope it carries for healing. So it's now featuring and it will be scheduled for touring from uh, this summer and few slots are still available. Program focus is science and technology, five thematic zones, striking original immersive scenography, 200 collection items, interactive videos, devices and so. And uh, please, so there we are, do not hesitate to contact me for any further information. And thanks again to 10 Eile team for this opportunity and you all for your attention. Thank you very much. I've rushed it. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Alexa Fedinsky and I'm the manager of international traveling exhibits here at National Geographic Society. And today I'll be talking about two new photographic shows and one immersive experience we have available to tour in the US in 2023. So next slide, please. So the first one is Wolves, photography by Ronan Donovan, developed together with the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Wyoming. And here you can see some of the details about what comes in the exhibition package on the slide. But this exhibition talks about two wolf packs, one in the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem and another at the Ellesmere Island in the Canadian Arctic and uses the power of storytelling to explore the relationship between humans and wildlife, and also to dispel some of the misconceptions that drive human wildlife conflict. And it's currently on display at the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson, Wyoming, and will open next at the High Desert Museum in Bend, Oregon. Next slide, please. Next, we have Pristine Seas, Bringing the Ocean Back, which chronicles the National Geographic project, which helped create 26 of the largest marine protected areas in the world. So the Pristine Seas Traveling Exhibition reveals the benefits of these marine protected areas in protecting biodiversity, preserving carbon stocks, and ensuring economic and food security for the local communities who depend on the ocean for their survival. And so this one is currently on display at the David Brower Center in Berkeley, California, and is soon to open in Museum Omniversum in The Hague in the Netherlands in February. Next slide, please. Next, we have Beyond King Tut, the immersive experience, which celebrates the 100th anniversary of the legendary discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. So Tut is not an artifact exhibition, which allows for the artifacts from Tut's tomb to remain in Egypt, but visitors will experience cinematic storytelling and soaring projection imagery of Tut's life, afterlife, and also ancient Egyptian traditions. 
So it's currently on display here at the National Geographic Museum in Washington, DC, and is also on display in Los Angeles and will soon open in San Diego and in Atlanta. Next slide, please. So for more information, please contact our team here at this email, exhibitions at ngs.org. You can also find more information, including our upcoming catalog of exhibitions in the next couple of weeks at this website. And we also look forward to seeing you at AAM. So please stop by our booth. And we'll also have our large scale Becoming Jane exhibition opening the same weekend, May 19th at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. So thank you very much. Hi, Carrie, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? Yeah, you can see. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, everybody. My name is Carrie O'Keefe, Director of Business Development at Exhibits Development Group and CultureNet. Um, next slide, please. Uh, the first exhibition I'd like to kick off with is Electric Playhouse Travels, and if you were at AAM in Boston last year, you were able to see this exhibition in person. It is a digital hands-free STEAM experience full of games and artistic interactives. Using projection mapping and sensors, your visitors' movements and interactions are tracked, creating fun exploration and play. We have flexible design layouts available, and it's currently at Michigan Science Center. We do have an opening for fall of 2023. Next slide, please. All right, the next exhibition we wanted to showcase is Evolution. After a very successful run in Saudi Arabia and Dubai, it will be finally coming to North America in 2024. This groundbreaking exhibition is heightened by sensory and artistic mastery. It has the most advanced animatronic dinosaurs and other creatures in a completely immersive experience featuring acoustic atmospheres and optical effects. We'd love to bring this to your institution, so please reach out for more information. Next slide, please. Uh, next up is Digital Me, which puts your visitors at the center of the action as they explore today's digital and social world through over a dozen larger than life exhibits. We do have an immediate opening for Digital Me, so please reach out. Next slide, please. And lastly, I wanted to provide an update on CultureNet. If you're not familiar with CultureNet, it's a division of EDG that helps institutions buy and sell their idle assets to become more sustainable. Stay tuned to learn more um, about our new app that we've been developing to make it easier to list and sell your items. And the Field Museum recently posted Tanawanasaurus skeleton cast. It will be sending out an e-newsletter um, on that today. So take a look at our website, culturenet.com, for more info. Next slide, please. And thank you. I look forward to connecting with you. Reach out for any other information. Thanks. Well, I think we're at time. It's 9.30. Thank you all to everyone who presented. Um, we will send a follow-up email and it will have the link to the recording on our YouTube channel. Um, there'll also be the file of the slideshow. Um, and we'll also send out our survey um, in that email and then also contact emails to sign up for mailing lists. So thanks so much for joining us um, and we'll see you all many of you at AIM in Denver. Absolutely. And um, as we mentioned before, all of the materials will be available um, via an email that we'll send out, as well as on our YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions, reach out. Thanks, Alan.